We have so many participants in tonight's service, and I'm grateful for all of you readers, singers, and to those doing dramatic readings. I look forward to hearing every part of it. And yes, every Christmas Eve, we also acknowledge Glenn and Nancy Compton, as it is their wedding anniversary. And Nancy, how many years is it on this fine year? 43. 43. Well, congratulations. Uh, married on Christmas Eve in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, right? Oh, that's a good place. Boy, just as, as, as beautiful as it gets. All of you should have your candle now. If anyone doesn't have a candle, hold your hand up, and Bill Schuler will get one to you. And at that time of the service, Bill is going to come forward and take the light from the Christ candle and give it to all of you near the center aisle, and we'll share the light among ourselves before the singing of the final hymn. The offering plate is in the back tonight, and it was there for this purpose also last Sunday morning. The offering tonight, every bit of it, will go to Blessings of Hope. That ministry uh, that, start, uh, that 20 years ago started out in someone's garage and now has turned into a $6 million operation of reclaiming unused food and distributing it to those who are in need and hungry. Just the most astonishing miracle you could imagine. Thank you. We'll bow our heads for the opening prayer. Dear God, in the quiet of this cold winter evening, we gather to celebrate your birth coming into this world to save us and love us just as we are. We gather as friends and as a church family and pray for your wisdom and grace that as we worship in these moments and throughout tomorrow, we will once again grasp your great love not only for us, but for all humankind. We welcome you to this, your service. Amen. And at this time, we will have our prayer Cindy would be 
willing to do the second scripture reading that's listed. I, I have a hunch you would, or I wouldn't ask you publicly. Let me say, hey, well. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Our first hymn is number 121, Come, Thou Long-Expected Jesus. David. 
and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And I have another thank you this evening. During the past two weeks, when Cindy's been recuperating from major foot surgery, she prepared the bulletin for tonight and for tomorrow, where tomorrow will be a brief carol sing, singing the story of Christmas. So thank you much. And we will turn to responsive reading one, two, four. And as a congregation, please speak out with volume, reading everything printed in red. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give the name of Jesus, because he will save his Lord from their sins. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And now we'll have our third scripture reading. The 
white candle. It is called the Christ can candle. But Jesus is the light of the world. And our fourth scripture reading. I'm not sure he's waited a whole year to do this, but he'll have something to say. This is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. This scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Mary, Joseph, shepherds, three witnesses, three perspectives, three voices calling us tonight, calling us to the story, calling us to hear, to pause, to listen, to reflect, to, to respond. Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of our Lord, <coughs> the unwed mother of God, a girl really, probably no more than 16 and possibly younger. A girl who said yes. Yes to God. Yes to scandal. Yes to risk. Yes to the possibility of being ostracized by her family. Yes to the possibility of being abandoned by her fiance. Yes to the possibility of being killed for being unfaithful. A girl who said yes. Yes to God. Mary, the mother of Jesus. The mother of our Lord was no shrinking violet. Placid, submissive, quietly taking what was dealt. Softly sitting in the dark, singing soothing lullabies. Not her. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in fact a burning flame. Was in fact a prophet of justice. Was in fact a voice crying out in the wilderness. Upsetting the apple cart. Overturning the status quo. Heralding the new creation where justice and peace are the norm. And foreigners are welcome. Where the hungry are fed. And the rich are turned away. Where the poor are embraced. And the mighty are stripped of their strength. 
where the anonymous masses are named by God and the arrogant are reduced to nothing. Joseph, the father of Jesus, the father of our Lord, stoic, quiet, worker, provider, protector, dreamer, always in the background, always the silent partner, always in the shadows behind the mother and child. However, he is just as crucial to the story. He is just as important. And he is just as dangerous. Yes, yes dangerous. dangerous. Because he too said yes. Yes to God. Yes to scandal. Yes to risk. Yes to accepting a wife who would be regarded <coughs> as tainted. Yes to public distrust of his own standing and behavior. Yes to having to confront his own jealous jealousies and fears. Joseph, the honorable man. Joseph, the radical lover. Joseph, the overthrower of the expected. Who refused to let suspicion set his agenda. Who refused to let fear dictate his response. Also burned with the divine flame. Was also consumed with a vision of justice. In which all are welcome. All are welcome. No matter how disruptive they might be. Joseph welcomed the Christ child into his own family. And let go of the need for revenge. And let go of the desire for retribution. And let go of being in control of his life. And lovingly, faithfully, dangerously, embraced his dangerous wife. Embraced her dangerous son. Embraced the dangerous new creation. Coming to birth in front of him. Shepherds. The first witnesses. First recipients of the good news. Glad singers of tidings. Joyful tellers to all who would listen. Praising and thanking God for what they had seen and heard. Shepherds. Biblical symbol of those who care. Protectors of the vulnerable. Leading their flocks. Feeding their sheep. Finding green pastures in which their charges can find rest. But these shepherds are dangerous. These shepherds upset the status quo. These shepherds overthrow what cause passes for normal. Not what they did. Not by saying yes. Not by their singing and telling and praising. These shepherds are dangerous because of what happened to them. Because of what they were told. Because it was shepherds who were told it. Because of who they were. We need to remember the truth about shepherds. In spite of all the good PR and biblical imagery, they were assumed to be lazy, which might have been true. They were portrayed as dirty, which was probably true. They were regarded as smelly, which was certainly true. They were, in fact, viewed as outsiders, as less than important, as undesirable. And these shepherds were also unreliable. Remember what happened when they had their vision? Remember how they responded? They ran. They left their flocks. They abandoned their duty. They, they had, had one, one job. job. Stay with the sheep. Care for the sheep. Don't leave the sheep. And they left. They ran off. Leaving their livelihood. Or possibly even worse, leaving someone else's livelihood. In order to see a baby. The child of an unwed mother. The child of a radical father. Who had been born a nobody. Just like them. Just, Just like them. them. Just like us. The angels came to shepherds, lazy, dirty, smelly, unreliable shepherds, saying, to you is born a savior, to you, to you, a dangerous, scandalous, risky savior, through whom God says yes to shepherds and outsiders and strangers and everyone who is considered other. Mary. Joseph, shepherds, three witnesses, three perspectives, three voices, calling us tonight, calling us to the story, calling us to hear, to pause, to listen, to reflect, 
to respond. Respond to the flame of justice burning within. Respond to the new creation being born in front of us. Respond with joy to the good news being sung to us. The lowly are regarded with favor. The fearful are shown mercy. The weak are lifted up. The hungry are fed. The outsiders are welcomed. And the dangerous, scandalous, risky promise of love is fulfilled in you this night. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now we'll have our last scripture reading. This will be Luke two through eight through fifteen. <clears throat> And there, was, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring to you good news of great joy that will be for the, all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. We'll return to hymn 137. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. 137. <laughs>
the God of all ages, who was too glorious to even look upon, whom Moses and Isaiah fell down on their faces before, chose to come to us in a dark little cave. The lesson of Christmas Eve is God is not going to come to you or me in the great spectacular things of life. God will meet us in the ordinary events of our lives. Yeah, scriptures say that Jesus came to his own, and much of his own never received him. The message is simple and must be received simply. God can relate to the hurts of our lives. God gave up everything to be available for you. It's not how we see things that counts. God will meet us in the ordinary events of our lives if we simply make room <coughs> like they did on that first silent night. At this time, Bill Schuller is going to come forward and take the candle and the light and give it to all of you, and then we will say the three verses of Silent Night, printing on your bulletin. <coughs> Let's stand if we're able. And we'll have someone uh, start us out in verse 4.
let us pray. Dear God, as the sun sets on this Christmas Eve, we celebrate you and your great love story that has entered in each of our lives. May we go home now and focus on all that is good, on this great salvation that is freely given to us. And may we count our blessings because we know that you first reached out to us before we ever reached out to you. Dismiss us in your peace, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.